America, WNST, Taos of Baltimore and Baltimore Positive, still broadcasting in high-quality mono AM sound at 1570 AM. Hope you're setting your dial out there. we got football heading uh, into town this weekend, home cooking for the Ravens. Luke Jones is out in Owens Mills making all of that happen. And, of course, the Maryland Crab Cake Tour is back out on the road this Thursday. We'll be at the Beaumont and Catonsville. we have a full schedule coming up for the fall. All of it brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. And, of course, we're giving away some Ravens scratch-offs as well as our friends at Goodwill. And Window Nation, 866-90-NATION. My windows are beautiful. It's uh, been nice in the fall here. And, of course, our friends at the Restaurant Association of Maryland uh, celebrating a very successful Maryland Restaurant Week. Uh, I did gain a little week, uh, week last week, so I did eat out a couple times. So uh, not the 31 crab cakes, the 31 days, and 31 breweries are not too much. Um, I love doing pieces around here about things that benefit the community. You all know that for Baltimore Positive. Um, I had a friend of mine reached me and said, Boys and Girls Clubs, they haven't been on in a while. And I'm like, let's do this thing. I know they got some new initiatives out there. Elon DeBirch joins us now. And, I, you know, I asked Elon in my, my green rooming segment. Don Muller would tell you I don't green room very long. I said, how long have you been at Boys and Girls Because I think Elon looks young like me and figures she must be new to 22 years at Boys and Girls Clubs. Uh, she is the chief strategy officer. We're going to strategize right now and talk about some things going on here with the Boys and Girls Clubs. How are you? What's going on, Elonda? I am great, and I love your energy. <laughs> well, I mean, I have energy, but I don't know that I have enough energy to keep up with all those boys and girls and these boys and girls clubs. Um, you know, true story for me as a kid, my dad was involved with the boys and girls club in Highland Town. Now, I'm talking early 70s here. Um, I remember going. I remember being a part of it. But the modern version of this, I have a feeling it's a little different than I remember it, right? Yes. For one, it's now Boys and Girls Club. Back then it was the Boys Club. It was. Yes. Yes. Um, and I think one of the major differences with Boys and Girls Club currently is that we really try to provide wraparound services to our young people, especially after COVID. So we do all of our programs we did before, such as homework. We have arts program, athletic programs, um, but we also focus on their academics. We also provide warm meals to our young people. And, you know, during COVID, a lot of our young people didn't have uh, electronics in order to participate in virtual uh, schooling. So we provided that as well as a lot of basic, uh, basic needs that um, our community were in need of and connecting them with resources. Well, Elonda, I've been all over the state the last couple of years. I've done these cra crazy crab cake tours uh, in August. I had 30 crab cakes last year all over the state. This year, it's my 31st year on radio. So I got you beat by nine years. I'm at 31 right now. Back to get, we'll go into 32 in a couple of weeks. Um, but so I, I've been all over the state, and, and I talked to a lot of politicians uh, and a lot of electeds and a lot of folks running for office. And, you know, for me, I, I've been out on the farms and out in the mountains and the eastern shore in western Maryland where you go up and down a mountain and your phone doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's, listen, I live in a city, right? I, this is where I lived downtown Baltimore for 20 years. This is literally, I lived on the 23rd floor. I can't even remember a time where like the phone didn't work or a message didn't go through other than a service or something like that, but a time when I didn't have bars. And then mm -hmm. there's a point where you like, you start to drive around the state and you get on the back road, you, you, you don't have bars. So you can't search anything. You can't communicate with anybody. You can't watch television. You can't play games. You can't do anything, right? And then I think to myself, you don't have to go to the farm to have this happen, right? Like there's right. plenty of kids in our city in a digital world. And I'm still a pencil and pen guy, right? But I, I've been in these modern classrooms where everybody's on a device. I've seen three and four-year-old kids mastering their texting <laughs> skills and stuff like that. So I think we're talking about kids now, but if a kid doesn't have a device, and then if the kid has a device and doesn't have the ability and it costs money to get online, right? Um, that that service is not available. Tell me from a from a the city standpoint and for young people here, I just can't imagine the, the, the gap that exists when you don't have technology or the ability to get the technology. I don't know how you learn in the modern world. And, I, and that worries me on the farms for a lot of people and the way they vote and the information they're getting, but it really concerns me for children. You know, that's one of the beautiful things about Project Bounce Back. Um, Governor Hogan has allowed us as a Boys and Girls Club entity to really go into those communities where we truly are needed the most. So our focus is having a Boys and Girls Club in every county in Maryland. Um, we currently have 70 Boys and Girls Club sites across the state. 
Uh, when I think about there's 40, 24 counties, are we missing one? <laughs> We're missing a couple. Okay, but on our way. I mean, We're Kent County, there's nobody there. I couldn't even get a crab cake. I took Caroline County. I'm trying. So believe me, I went around, but there, there are, I mean, this people think that the city is the only place there's poverty in the state, which is uh, incredible, or that there's need in the state, or that there's elderly in need. I mean, imagine elderly in the city. Imagine elderly in a farm and they can't. They, I mean, I, I, I've seen this, but for children specifically and for the work that you do and the backgrounds, all different backgrounds people come from, this project bounce back is a big deal for the state, right? Yes, yes it is. Last year, we opened a Boys and Girls Club in Cambridge, our first Boys and Girls Club there. And that was the first time there was a Boys and Girls Club on the Eastern Shore. And so since then, we've opened, I think about four Boys and Girls Club, four or five Boys and Girls Clubs there with more on the way. So it's just amazing that you go into the communities. And for me, they resemble a lot of the communities that we're currently serving here in Baltimore City. Um, and so you know, our mission and one of the reasons I've been with Boys and Girls Club for over 20 years is because of our mission. We truly believe in our young people and want to provide them with every resource, every opportunity possible for them to be successful. Um, our tagline with Boys and Girls Club is we do whatever it takes. And for example, when you were part of the Boys and Girls Club, you probably just went swimming, shot some hoops in the gym. Shot hoops. My dad and I love to shoot hoops. That's true. <laughs> And, and you know. <laughs> now we know that we need to do more. And, and that's one of the beautiful things. Out of COVID, one of the things we learned as an organization is that we have to be trauma informed. And so Boys and Girls Clubs of America has an initiative that by 2026, all of the Boys and Girls Club, all 5,000 organizations across this country are trauma informed. That means understanding adverse childhood experiences, um, understanding trauma, understanding the effect that it has on our young people, that oftentimes when they come to our club, it's not just that they had a bad day because someone didn't want to play with them during recess, is that they are dealing with a lot of trauma from home. And how do we as caring adult professionals address each of our children the way that they need to be addressed? How do we connect them to the resources that they need and not just our young people, but also their parents, their families. So that's again, another major difference in Boys and Girls Club today, even compared to five years ago, we really are concerned about the whole family. How does one find the Boys and Girls Club? I, I just, I, you mentioned parents and the importance of parents. I don't wanna say give me a typical experience because there's no such thing, but if someone out there is listening and, and not wants to be involved to write a check or like that, that's great too. But let's say you have a young person and they're searching for something and they'd say, well, let's try this. You know, we, 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 mm -hmm. we tried music, we tried sports, we tried this, we tried that. This is another place. What's someone going to find the first time they come into a boys or girls club here in Baltimore? So here in Baltimore, you'll find someone who is greeting you when you come in, uh, the beautiful thing I love about our staff is most of our staff are either from the community or have worked at their Boys and Girls Club for a long period of time. So they pretty much know everyone in the community. So if you're coming in and you're new, one, they're gonna know that you're new, but they'll greet you. They'll ask you if you like to have information about the Boys and Girls Club, uh, depending on what time you come in, because if it's right after school, there's a lot going on with the kids coming through the door and signing in with their membership cards. But you'll find that they're doing homework. Um, after homework, uh, they, they may be doing uh, a music class, a dance class. They may be going to the gym. They may be having a cooking class. Uh, there may be a guest speaker that's coming in, or there may be a field trip. Um, and then by the end of the evening, you'll find that they're all sitting down together, having a warm meal, uh, chit-chatting with each other, filling staff in on whatever else they may have missed telling them when they came through the door. And then you'll see our staff um, during dismissal for our young people, walking them outside, making sure that either they're connected with their parent or that they are on their way um, home safe and sound. She is Elonda Burke. She is from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Maryland. She's chief strategist there. She's been with them for over two decades. And uh, that's a lot of children. They're not children anymore. They're as old as me, right? I mean, yeah. some of these people, right? 
a lot of uh, the young people that I started with, they are, they are parents themselves. I don't know how I feel about that now, but. That weirds me yeah. out. Yeah, I know, man. My kid just turned 38, so I got you. More than 16,000 youth participate in the Boys and Girls Clubs program over the past year. 47% up from last year. And you mentioned opening new places and new communities. That'll do that. More than 11,600 youth right here in the state of Maryland provided resources. Meals, laptop supplies to enhance their outcomes and family stability in the first year of Project Bounce Back. Give me a little bit of Project Bounce You've been at this a long time. So when was Project Bounce Back thought up, dreamed up, driven to Annapolis, like all of that? Because this sounds like something that doesn't happen real quickly. And probably the plague may have brought it on, huh? Yes, yes, yes. The, the plague man did bring it on. Um, we received our announcement in May of 2021. So last year we received that the information that we were going to be awarded $15 million. Uh, this is the first ever of a private public uh, partnership. And so it was a wonderful opportunity for boys and girls clubs to know that we can continue to uh, serve up to, not even up to, our goal is to serve 45,000 young people in Maryland. So we're at 16,000 now, we have about 30 more to go in the next two years. Um, and our focus is uh, communities that uh, serve Title I young people and also rural communities. So when you're going up to the mountain, hopefully either this year or next year, you, you'll be able to find a Boys and Girls Club. Well, I'm going back to the mountain now. I mean, you know, I, I was a beach guy till I discovered. So, you know, the fun part of this crazy Maryland crab cake tour, and by the way, I want to promote that. Uh, our friends at the Maryland Lottery giving us some scratch offs. We'll be this week on Thursday at the Beaumont with our friends at Goodwill as well as Window Nation. And uh, we're going to be doing that uh, all, uh, all through the fall, every Friday for the most part. We're doing Thursday this week. But you know, I put this idea together to go out and you know meet people and talk to people and learn stuff about this. It really is amazing, though. You go across the state and you see these needs and things. But like I had never thought of going to Deep Creek Lake. And the idea of doing the crab cake tour was like it would take me places. And the plague did this, right? Because right. we had masks on. We had to get outside, but figure out where to go. And I'm like, never been there. Never been there. Let's go to all these places. We have a beautiful state here. And I, yeah. you know, I, when you say Cambridge, I had never in my life, not even to go to the bathroom. I hadn't even, there was a tasty freeze in the old days in Cambridge, just like the old John Mellencamp song, sucking on a chili dog at tasty freeze. The only tasty freeze I ever know of in my life, I had gone in there one time in my life because of John Cougar Mellencamp, but I had never been off of 50 other than stop at the red light, you know, maybe go to the bathroom, get a milkshake or something on the way to Ocean City. And these communities are beautiful. I mean, like just getting off of in Cambridge, in Easton, in Trap, in Salisbury and all these. And those are just the places on the road. That's not Blackwater down south of there, finding crab cakes down on Hooper's Island at Old Salties or getting off the road and going up to a Herlock and getting a crab cake at, uh, at, uh, at the Suicide Bridge. I'm giving you ideas here. I'm giving you all the good crab cakes. So if you're people ask me all the time. So um, but Cambridge, when you come into a new community, tell me what you find there. And you say, here we are. Here's our flag. It's boys and girls clubs. Come on in. We need boys and we need girls. Boom. What does that look like in recruiting people that, you know, some eight, 10 year old kid, they didn't, they weren't with their pop in Highland Town in 1970. They probably didn't even know what it is. Right. I know what it is from a lifetime of knowing about right. YMCAs and community organizations and boys and girls clubs. What does it represent when you come into a place that's never had it before? Our time establishing Boys and Girls Club in Cambridge and also in Salisbury has been wonderful. Again, I've been doing this for, for a while and the open arms that we received in the community, Cambridge and Salisbury, ha I can't even put it into words. Um, you know, we, we did a lot of open houses. We did a lot of town halls, talking to the community, talking obviously to local politicians, but more importantly, talking to our parents and listening to our parents and what they wanted for their young people. And uh, when we opened registration for Cambridge, uh, we can only serve, I think it was like about 45 young people. Uh, within a couple of days, we had a waiting list. Our, our summer program was beautiful. We had parent participation, parent involvement. We had a couple of parent em employees. Um, they were part of our parent meetings, offering suggestions. Obviously we're newbies to town, right? 
and letting us know what was going on in the community, letting us know how we could assist them. And that, that for me, is the beautiful part about Boys and Girls Club. We don't come in and say, this is what you need. We listen to our parents. More importantly, we listen to our young people. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why we've been successful. And as word has continued to spread across uh, the Eastern shore, it just makes it that much more easy for us to be welcomed into, into the communities. Well, they welcome me in Salisbury down in Mogan's Oyster House. And, uh, you know, we've had some crab cakes down there as well for Telly's uh, and Mayor Jake Day. She's a wonderful man. The Secretary of Kindness down there uh, as well uh, welcomed us again this summer. So um, I, I think getting out and seeing these things, it, it gets beyond the city. And you guys have been here a long, long time. How many locations in the in the in the Baltimore proper area and um and opportunities for people in my audience right here to, to participate and do what, what they can to help Boys and Girls Clubs. Yeah, so we have a Boys and Girls Club in at uh, Webster Kendrick in the Park Heights area and Westport Homes, uh, Brooklyn O'Malley. We have a club there. O'Donnell Heights. We just opened a club last year. That's at east side. That's my side. All right. At yep. the door on North um, Chester. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm missing any other Boys and Girls Club. The beautiful part is we have two new initiatives that have happened because of COVID. Um, we have Clubhouse at Your House, of which one of our Boys and Girls Club organizations uh, were, were key in getting that off the ground. So during COVID and even now, you could do Boys and Girls Club in your living room on your laptop. You could do a STEM activity. You could even take a ballet class, which was very interesting to watch. Um, but also we have- I'm not good at ballet, just so you know. That's <laughs> bad class not. for me. No. <laughs> And then we have Club on the Go. And so Club on the Go is literally taking Boys and Girls Club programming in a van throughout the city, throughout the state. So we were able to go into a number of Baltimore City housing um, projects and provide summer programming to our young people. So it's no longer just bricks and mortar of where you can find a Boys and Girls Club. But if you're in a community and you don't have a Boys and Girls Club there, you can always go to the website and see where the closest one is. And that's BGC Maryland, spelled all the way out, um, dot org, and put in your zip code and it will let you know which Boys and Girls Club is the closest and whether they have a club on the go. Elon DeBirch is the chief strategy officer for the Boys and Girls Clubs here of uh, Maryland and uh, getting out all around the state, opening up new places, taking care of uh, Project Bounce Back as well. So this money that's allocated, is this three years, five years, 10 years? How does that work from the state uh, participation to, to, to get some growth going for your organization? It's a three-year um, funding opportunity. Uh, like you mentioned, all of the wonderful outcomes we've had for the first year. Uh, we are now entering into our second year, and we're really focusing on opening up additional club sites. Like I said, we have 46 new locations slotted. 46 the last time I checked. <laughs> that could have changed from last week. Um, but yeah, really making sure that we serve communities that are in need. Again, like I mentioned, um, Title I communities and rural communities, which is why you'll see a lot of Boys and Girls Clubs popping up on the Eastern Shore and in the mountains. <laughs> well, you know what? I like both of those places, and I had really never been to either one of them before last year. So when you're down there at Salisbury, you look old enough to get a beverage, stop into one of the breweries, go over to the Ugly Pie and get yourself some delicious fresh-made pie there in downtown Salisbury. Um, and uh, I hope to have you back on again soon. Appreciate all the insights and uh, the great, truly the Baltimore positive work that you guys are doing over at the Boys and Girls Clubs. I appreciate you having on. Uh, Thank have time you for me today. so much. Have Elon DeBirch, <laughs> uh, Boys and Girls Club. She sent you out to the website. You can read more about Project Bounce Back as well with Governor Hogan. And uh, we had Wes Moore on a couple of weeks ago. I, I, Wes appears to be the next governor, so we'll be talking to him about these kinds of things moving forward as well. You can always find me day or night at BaltimorePositive.com. You can always throw me an email to nasty at WNST.net. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, all over the place. And, of course, doing the Maryland crab cake tour i am nestor we are wnst am 1570 towson baltimore and we never stop talking baltimore positive <laughs>